Hey girls, welcome to EBTV. Today I got to hang out with an awesome professional photographer, <laughs> Katie R. She was amazing. She mm -hmm. taught me like things to do and not to do when I'm taking pictures or selfies mm -hmm. or how to pose. It was really awesome for somebody like me who yeah. doesn't really love pictures. Yeah. Yeah. But you like selfies. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to learn how to take a good selfie. Yeah. yeah I know. Because whether we admit it or not, we all do it. Yeah. Especially the ones in the car when you're like, I'm looking good. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Rachel, awesome. I've never done that. Never? I'm talking about. Okay. okay. You have. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> and then we're also going to talk to two really great girls. Mm -hmm. um, Paige Omardian is awesome. And she has a great story of how she actually came cancer when she was younger and how God healed her mm -hmm. and how he used that to show us her purpose yeah. in life. And then we'll also talk to Laura. Laura has another great testimony. Mm -hmm. She was a New York City model and a college athlete. So you're not going to want to miss that. Yeah, those are great interviews. It's really exciting. And it's cool that we talk about their purpose because mm -hmm. it kind of did change with Laura's and then Paige's was really shaped with some of the things that she went mm -hmm. through. And last week on the teaching, we talked about gifts and talents. And this is part two. And after we discover what our gifts and talents are, how do we know? Is that God's will or not? I know there's so many times where I just stop and do nothing because I'm afraid that I'm going to do the wrong thing. And you end up doing nothing. Yeah, and, and then you get frustrated right. and do nothing. Or you're doing a lot and you're wondering why it's not coming to fruition. Yeah. Why isn't the dream job happening? Why isn't the record deal happening? And is yeah. it God's will that those things happen? Yeah, and those are some really big questions. So yeah. we hope you guys enjoy the show and we will be back in a few minutes. And I'm totally hanging out with Laura Isaacitis. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, we're so thrilled that you're here with us today. So, Laura, you have an amazing story of really how you became a Christian at 18 years mm -hmm. old, and then you went off to college, and you were a college athlete. Mm -hmm. Let's kind of pick up there. Tell me more. Yeah, I was. I played volleyball for University of Kansas, the Jayhawks, and um, at the age of 18, my story basically is that I. I was, uh, I live for my sport. Hmm. And, you know, as, as we've heard before, we're created to worship something. And, well, actually, we're created to worship God. And if we don't worship Him, we're going to find something that we're going to put something our, else. we're going to find something. And so for me, it was sports. It was actually sports and my image, you know, the body, what it looked like, getting attention from guys, and then also doing well in sports and that type of thing. So mm -hmm. by the time I was 18 and at, at, at Kansas, I had a, a full athletic scholarship, a five-year, signed a five-year contract. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, something I had dreamed of since I was young. And then here mm -hmm. I am and thinking I'm going, you know, I'm going to go after this. And, and at that point, um, I had uh, experienced an injury and basically my world came crashing down because I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I was created for. If I wasn't made to play volleyball, then I had no idea what I was made for. Right, because it made you feel worthwhile playing yes. volleyball. And without that, there was a hole and it needed hole. to be filled. Yes, and so I had, long story short, I had some awesome Christians reach out to me mm -hmm. uh, at, at, on campus. And after a, a moment where I was like, God, if you're real, I wasn't raised around that, you know, the Christian culture. And so I had this heart to heart with God saying, God, if you're real, then, you know, show me someone, bring someone into my life. And right. within two weeks, I had these Christians reaching out to me which I'd, I'd never encountered Christianity like that mm -hmm. and um, but at that point I was a really broken girl I had um, I had been battling uh, bulimia for two years wow. and um, the pressures of the world were so strong on on me finding my identity in what the world says about me about what my body looked like what guy I was dating um, the pressures of being recruited by these top schools they it, it was so much to me that I resorted to an unhealthy uh, life controlling issue with as bulimia were you trying to be perfect absolutely you know when you you know when you look to the way that the world tells us that we're supposed to be that's the standard that we will try to attain our value and our right. worth from. But in, um, if, in, in the scripture, 1 John 2, 15 through 17, God says, do not love the world or anything in the world because that's going to pass away. The, love of, or, yeah, the, the lust of the eyes, the flesh, and the pride of life. 
it's not do not love the world people, but it's the things, the systems. Like right. I've got to look this way. Because they will be leave this you way. empty. It will ultimately. They were never empty. created to they satisfy. Were, exactly, and and I experienced that. I ended up, you know, I attained titles that girls, young girls, are looking to. I right. I ended up down the road got a, a two year contract with one of New York City's top model agencies. I was a Division one athlete, as we wow. said. I was dating star athletes, <laughs> pro athletes. You know that type of thing. And girls like, oh, if I could just be that. If I could just attain that then somehow there's fulfillment but you will never find satisfaction in that you will not and it was really in 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 my journey of healing and freedom with Christ that I was able to uh, walk out of uh, I'm 20 years now free from from um, bulimia that's amazing and it was a, it, you know people are like how do you do because they they say once you are bulimic you'll be bulimic the rest of your life or else you'll struggle with it mm. but with Christ there's hope and those same things that the world uses is not the same with God because he gives us hope and he has the power to, to destroy things that, that have power over us. Now, was it a, it, did it just poof away? No, there was a journey because there's always, a, um, there's, there's reasons why we do what we do. And, and so there was a deep, deep rooted issue. Why was I? And that's important. It is a journey. It takes it is time. A You're not just going to wake up the next yes. day. It's not going to be gone. No. And you've written a book now mm -hmm. about this. I have. Yeah. It's, it, there's stories about that, that, it's there's it's called caterfly identity discover wow. who you are and how a mirror can change your life and so in that you're going to find some practical ways you can overcome uh, these unhealthy standards and these these patterns that that just scream out at us that we're supposed to be like and and really there, there's ways that you can find confidence in loving yourself and and really celebrating who God has made you to be and that sounds great. I awesome. can't wait to check it out. Well, thank well you. we're out of time, but thank you so much for well, hanging thank you out so with much us. For having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, so don't go anywhere. We've got plenty of cool stuff coming up. Hi, everything beautiful. Um, my question is how can a girl feel secure about herself when the world is telling her to act, look, and dress a certain way? Hannah, that's a great question. And you know, the best way I can really think to answer that is that the things in the world, they change all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, the style's different, the music's different, what's cool, what's not, it's different. And we really can't find our security and look for our security in something that changes all the time. That's exhausting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, and I think one thing, it, I'd be lying if I said, you know, I, I didn't wake up and I wasn't like, I wanna look cute and I wanna look yeah. in style. And I don't think there's anything bad about that, mm -mm. but it becomes a problem when you look at what you look like, you know, and that's where you get your worth from. I don't think Jesus hates makeup. I don't think he hates clothes. I don't think he hates, you know, moving with that. I think he, he does not like when you put your worth and your hope in anything but him. Mm -hmm. But it is, you know, we daily have to renew our mind. Yeah, absolutely. That it is, it is, it's a battle every day. It really yeah. is. Mm -hmm. And I would also say if there's TV shows or movies or magazines or friends that you have that make you feel bad about yourself, then stop hanging out with yeah. them. Stop yeah, watching them. Absolutely. Turn the TV off. I'll be honest with you. There's things I don't watch and there's, pictures I don't look at, even on Facebook, because they make me feel insecure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I've had to cho choose to just shut that out of my life. And it yeah. is a choice, like you were saying. Yeah. It's a choice every day. Yeah. So Hannah, thank you so much for that question. And if you'd like to submit a question for our Q&A, please just shoot us an email. Hey there, if you would like a copy of today's EBTV show, call 615-754-0039. And be sure to mention the EBTV show number on your screen. Hey girls, it's Amy, and today my special guest is Katie Robinson, a professional <laughs> photographer, and we're just going to pick your brain today all about pictures. Awesome. So mm -hmm. I know iPhone is yes. what I do to take all my pictures with Instagram, Twitter, everything selfie, but you know what? Sometimes my pictures end up terrible. So what are some tips from you to get the best selfies that we can okay, possibly awesome. get? Well, step one, uh, the best, find the best lighting in the room. And you want that lighting to be on your face. And so a window light or whatever you have available, uh, you'll want to move around the room for that. And also, you want to tap the screen for two different reasons. Uh, one, to focus. Uh, where you want it focused on and also you can uh, tap on the dark or the light lightest part of the picture and it will expose on how dark or light you want that image uh, which is really nice to do in camera so that saves some time editing and all those apps <laughs> and yeah. also um, the other thing that you want to do is take your case off um, a lot of that 
the flash, especially well, if you're taking it with flash, it will reflect on the case and give it a different tint. And it won't be as true of a color. So take your case off and it'll be a lot better. <laughs> okay, well that makes sense then for some of mine. And you know, they all, we all talk about the angles, you know, for faces. So always up high, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And does somebody yeah. have a good side, <laughs> left, right? N not typically. I know some people might, you know, have a, a scar or, you know, if, you know, you have a zit that week, then <laughs> obviously the other side maybe. <laughs> but um, obviously, you know, just above is always good. It's a good angle. You never, very rarely do you want to take a shot of, of a female up. It's never a good angle. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and actually they have those uh, very funny before and afters of both yeah. <laughs> that are pretty entertaining. Now what about from like, you know, they're in front of me taking it when you're mm -hmm. in a group. If you're on the side, do you angle? I'm so, Absolutely. I don't know what to do when I'm getting Angling that is always good. And so you can kind of drop a shoulder and okay. throw a little, a little hip in there. That always helps, okay. you know? So angles are always a good thing, especially with us girls. So. Yeah, and then <laughs> filters, do you have one in particular in I do, makeup? like the early rise, I love that one. And with, a, with if you're dealing with a, a filter for, you know, people obviously, you want your skin tone to be kind of glowing. And so you don't wanna do the dark filters. It's going to increase all the shadows. It's not a good thing. So <laughs> any, like the early rise or the Mayfair, those are really great. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, stay tuned. We have much more coming up with Katie Robinson. Hey girls, welcome back to EBTV. This is part two of our series, Discovering God's Purpose for Your Life. Last week, we talked about gifts and talents. If you missed that, check out our website. You can find all the teachings there. But this week, we're gonna talk about, is it God's will or not? How do I know? That's a question I've asked myself a ton of times. The first good way is to figure out what our gifts and talents are. And then we have to figure out which way we go to pursue these things that we believe that God's called us to do. For me, I'm just gonna be honest with you girls. There are some times where I am so terrified to do the wrong thing that I do nothing. Look with me here at Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. It says here, again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. Girls, there is a ton of freedom in these verses. There was for me, and I promise there will be for you too. Let's dig in and look at three specific things. The first thing is that they says he divided his money. That right there is telling me his money, that could be his gifts, his talents. His is a capital H, which means it's referring to God. So our gifts and our talents, they're ultimately God's. God has given them to us. He created us specifically as a vessel to carry those gifts and those talents to pour through us to bring people closer to him through the gifts and talents that he's given us. You have a specific purpose. You are more than enough to carry out any gift, any talent, any purpose that God has given you because he created it just for you, just for you to do. Stop thinking that you're not qualified enough or that you're not good enough, or that you've messed up too much. Because God loves you, God forgives you, and God created you perfectly, uniquely you to do this specific thing. So stop telling yourself that you can't do it and that you're not good enough. The second thing here is that everyone got different amounts. Did you notice that? He gave one five, the other servant two, and the last one. God gifts us to our abilities and he gives us things to our abilities. He's not gonna give you something that you can't handle. The Bible tells us that no matter what, God is for us. No matter what, God will never leave us. No matter what, God will never forsake us. There is nothing that God has given you to do or is calling you to do that you can't do. And the good news is, is that you don't have to do any of that alone. He has gifted you and he is standing right next to side, right beside you. He's going before you. He's opening doors for you. He's making a way for you. He's covering you. Don't be afraid to step out in faith and do what you believe God's called you to do. The third thing, this is where it was a lot of freedom for me, girls. It says, he then left on his trip. 
He didn't leave a list of do's and don'ts. He didn't say, you have to do this. You have to go this way. You have to go that way. He gave the talents. He entrusted those talents. And then he left. Think about that for a second. Think of these. I have two examples I want to give you. First one is Adam and Eve. They were in the garden, a garden full of everything you can possibly imagine. And there was one tree that they were not allowed to touch. One. They had infinity amount of good choices and one bad choice. Let's think about this. How about the one? Have you heard people say, oh, I just want to find the one for my life. Well, here, think about this for a second. What if I married the wrong one? That seems like it would kind of throw off the rest of the entire human race. There's not just one perfect choice. There's not just one thing. Adam and Eve had a multiple amounts of good choices, one wrong choice. This is freeing because there are so many right choices. If your heart and your desire is to please God, and that is your motive behind doing what you're going to do, step out in faith and do that. If you start stepping off of course or backing up or drifting away from God, he loves you. He cares about you. He will correct you. He will direct you back onto the perfect plan that he has for your life. God can't, God can't drive a parked car. We have to be moving. We have to start putting action to our faith and let God come alongside, open the doors, make a way for us, go before us, because you know what? He will. That's what he's created us for, to carry out his purpose in this world through us. I encourage you girls, get up off the couch, whatever it is that you believe your gifts and talents are that God has created you to do, make one step this week, make a vision board, Write down some goals. Make a step to accomplishing those things. Don't be scared. Step out in faith. God is right beside you. He won't leave you. He will never, ever, ever forsake you. Hey girls, what's up? I'm Rachel and I'm hanging out with a fabulous girl. She's a writer, a speaker, and a recording artist. Her name is Paige Omardian. Paige, welcome to EBTV. Thank you, so excited to be here. Yeah, we're so thrilled to have you here today. Thank you. And Paige, before you were writing books and you were recording music, you were going through what seemed to be the, the hardest storm of your life. Mm, yes, um, just before my 11th birthday, I was diagnosed with bone cancer and that was a complete shock to me and my family because mm. I had just been a totally healthy little girl. Um, yeah. So when my right leg started hurting, doctors told me, oh, it's just growing pains and you'll be fine. And ultimately, after many tests, months of testing, it was discovered that I had something called Ewing sarcoma, which is a bone cancer. So I was immedi immediately thrown into chemotherapy treatments that made me lose my hair. Oh my goodness. And um, surgery to replace five inches of the bone in my leg. Um, so all of the treatment for that basically took about a year. And, um, and then God ultimately healed me of cancer and I stand here, or I sit here today, cancer free. Yeah. And, um, but God used that, that experience in my life to change me completely to open my eyes to so many things and just um, to really teach me a lot. Yeah, and God often does that. He mm -hmm. takes what seems like the worst part of our yes. lives and he, he doesn't waste it. Absolutely. He uses it for good. He uses mm -hmm. it to shape our heart and to mold our character Absolutely. into someone he can use to further the kingdom. Absolutely. Yeah, that I'm looking back now, even though that was the worst thing that happened in my life, mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Even if I could go back and take it away, I wouldn't because wow. of the amazing things that God brought about through it and the way that he changed me and just showed me just how precious life is. You know, I, I realized that as a young person, even I'm not invincible. And that was a right. really important lesson to learn. And that's something we forget far too often. Yeah, it's yeah something that God reminds me, you know, time and time again, Paige, mm -hmm. don't take this moment for granted. Don't take this for granted. You know, life is precious. Mm -hmm. And all of that led you to record an album mm -hmm. and to write a book called Wake Up Generation. Yes. And so, yes. So God used that circumstance, just like you said, he took mm -hmm. the worst thing that happened to me and he brought about some of the best things. Ultimately, I got to, um, he led me to move to Nashville and record a CD and um, called Wake Up. And that was really the themes that I wrote in that record were things that I learned through cancer. And then ultimately I got to write my book, Wake Up Generation. 
And tell me more about Wake Up Generation. Well, that book, God, God really, you know, shaped my heart through cancer. So as, you know, I got to go back into the, the you know, my life, I guess, uh, outside of the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, I was kind of in a culture shock after going through what I did and then going into school afterwards. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I just, I, I see things so differently now. And so God began to just stir this message on my heart uh, for the book, Wake Up Generation. And ultimately, uh, he's just started giving me things like that would ultimately become chapters when mm -hmm. I was 16. And um, the heart and message of that book is, you have a life, use it. You know, God is, has given you this precious mist of time on earth. Absolutely. And we each have a special purpose to live out. And so uh, really it's a don't waste your life message because that's what God really uh, struck in my heart when I was battling cancer. Absolutely, and I totally agree with you. I think that it's so easy for our generation to feel apathetic. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing we can do to change the world. Yeah. You know, many of us grew up watching the news. Yeah. We saw the economy was terrible and felt like we couldn't get a good job. We knew that there was a war in the Middle East. We might have heard older people say, you know, the values are dying, mm -hmm. everything's terrible. And that's not completely true. Mm -hmm. There is a purpose for each of us and yeah. each of us can make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's something that God just raised up this passion in me to, to share with young people is that, first of all, we're not invincible. No. So we have to live today. We have to live our purpose today because mm -hmm. I think culture tries to tell us, oh, you're young, you can just get it together later. And that's not at all what scripture says. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4.12, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but mm -hmm. set an example. And so that's something that, that I've really had a passion to share with just m my peers and, and anyone I meet is just, you know, God has a purpose for you right now. He if, does. If you're still breathing, there's a reason you're here. Mm -hmm. So don't don't write yourself off as you can't do something because God has put you here for a reason. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Oh, for sure. If you'd like to find out more about Paige, just go to our website, everythingbeautifultv.com. Does my nose Why look can't too I big? be taller? Will I ever be able Do to I cover look too that old? fit? In her book, Does This Make Me Look Fat? and other questions that need to be answered in the mirror of God's Word, author Monica Schmelter gives biblical insights that encourage women and girls to reject worldly standards of beauty and instead look into the mirror of God's Word to redefine their lives and beauty. This book was meant for me and every other girl who has looked in a mirror and said, I wish my, you fill in the blank, was smaller, bigger, or just plain different. This book is practical, biblical truths that can and will help you change the way you view yourself in the mirror. Order your copy today. Hey, it's Amy, and I'm here with Katie Robinson, who is a professional photographer. And Katie, how, what about when you're shooting other people? What can you do to, to line up the camera to make sure you get you know, the best possible picture of them? Absolutely, the same rules still apply for selfies, except when framing, you wanna make sure you're not just getting the shoulders and a lot of sky. I always say heads and feet, vertical. <laughs> and a lot of times with group shots, you, you have to do horizontal, which is fine. Um, you just wanna make sure you, you have everyone centered in the image, and so there's not excess of sky or your cropping off head, yeah. <laughs> foreheads. I'm sure I've done that before. We've all done it, so <laughs> it happens, especially in a rush. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. And now you brought two cameras. Mm -hmm. um, this is the digital one that you use. How would somebody pick out? Do you have a preference of a camera, or you know? Well, the standards are the the most popular are Canon and Nikon, of course, and they kind of battle back and forth on who's better, but they're they're equally, you know, and the, the, they compete very well. Uh, there's also Fuji and Sony. Um, I know my dad has a Sony camera that he can take a picture in the dark, like in a dark setting with no flash, and it's amazing. Okay. I'm very jealous of that camera. <laughs> But uh, there is a website, dpreview.com, and you can look at um, all the details on how to compare cameras. 
It's okay. a great source. Awesome. And how did you, um, I guess, how would people go about wanting to be a photographer? If they were like, I, I love my iPhone, mm -hmm. but I want to take it to the next level. What are some quick? There's nothing wrong with being self-taught. There's a lot of information there um, that's available online. Um, and when you want to get into a program, you can uh, take classes online. There's National Geographic, does uh, tr trips. And they're a little expensive, but it's less expensive than tuition. Uh, there's also, uh, we're always looking for assistance. And so if you find a photographer that you really love their work and you want to learn more from them, you're comfortable around them, you work well with them, um, see if they, you know, if you can come hold a reflector for them sometime. You yeah. know? So. Learn by experience. Absolutely. And, and lastly, about location with yes. iPhone really quickly. Very Never important. put in location, Twitter, all that stuff, right? Well, it's very easy to do uh, because uh, Actually, you could just go to your settings and then on camera, turn off location. Okay. Because, and the reason why you want to do that is that it keeps you safe. Um, not everyone uh, is as nice as the rest of us, and there are some people out there that uh, will hack into your system. They can actually find out where you took that at, where your bedroom is, if you took it in your bedroom. And so no matter what age you are, no one ever needs to know exactly where you are. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Again, if you have any other questions and for more tips on Katie and about photography, visit our website at everythingbeautifultv.com. Hey girls, thanks so much for joining us today. I know that I learned a lot from Katie about photography and taking selfies, mm -hmm. and now I can do them right, and I'll take the cover off, and so don't be surprised if you get a lot of selfies on your Facebook feed from me. Yeah, we're looking forward to that, aren't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we also talked to some really amazing girls. Paige Amardian has a great story mm -hmm. of how God really healed her from cancer and through what seemed to be the worst storm of her life, really shaped her heart into someone he could use. And also, Laura, she's just a beautiful person. Yeah. I mean, she was a New York City model and a former college athlete. And what she learned was that none of that stuff mattered and none of it made her happy. Yeah. And she doesn't need to be perfect. God loves her the way that she is. Right. And he created her specifically that way right. for the purpose that he specifically has for her. Yeah. I think if we can just start wrapping our mind around that, like we are specifically created like this mm -hmm. because of what God wants to do through our lives. So we kind of talked about that today in the teaching and I hope our te the teaching encouraged you girls to get up off the couch and put some faith mm -hmm. to the purpose and to the things that you enjoy doing. Don't be afraid to step out because you think you're going to do the wrong thing. There's a hundred right choices to make. There might be only one or two wrong choices. And um, if you guys want to go to the website, all the segments will be there, all the information about the guest. Check it out. We look forward to seeing you back here on EBTV. You won in a million Hey everyone, welcome to Everything Beautiful TV. EverythingBeautifulTV.com and get creative with do-it-yourself projects and fashion tips. Check out videos, read Real Talk blogs from real girls, find out where Henry's been spotted, watch EBTV on the Christian Television Network, and go to EverythingBeautifulTV.com now. Want more beautiful things in your life? You can contact EBTV. Find EBTV online at everythingbeautifultv.com. Check out our Facebook and Twitter, or you can write to the address on your screen, or call us at 615-754-0039.